Welcome back to another Pokemon What If Wednesday, where every single Wednesday morning I post a video going through last week's investing and collecting questions, where your guys' questions will actually be featured in the video, and one person's question will actually help me make the thumbnail. So please drop your questions down below for a chance to be in next week's video. And if I did comment to you saying great question, I might use this, and I didn't, please drop that same question again and make sure you put repeat question. And I'm not saying I'm some guru who just knows everything, but when I'm unsure, I always like to talk it out with a few people. It always helps me make my final decision. Then we do have to get thanks to our video sponsor real quick, and that is Arizona TCG. If you guys have a couple graded cards or a ton of graded cards you're looking to sell, but you don't want to deal with the hassle of shipping products out every day or people returning cards, Arizona TCG is perfect. Could be PSA, Beckett, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, it does not matter. You just send them your graded cards, and that's it. They're going to handle everything else. They're going to take professional scans of your cards. Then they're going to post it on their massive weekly eBay auctions. But you do have full control. You can change it to buy it now. You can track your collection. And the best part about all this is they charge almost the exact same amount as if you started your own eBay store. But this eBay store already has 100% positive feedback with over 10,000 cards sold. So definitely check them out. The links are in the description. All right, first question is from at CNG Doom PRFB8507. Should I sell my PSA 10 Bubble Mew now or hold it? So honestly, when stuff gets super hyped up like this, it's usually a good time to sell it. But I do feel like a lot of the Scarlet and Violet special illustration rares were pretty underrated and undervalued. There's a real possibility that these hold the same value or even gain more value. You know, if you compare them to Sword and Shield alternate arts, just the few Scarlet and Violet special illustration rares that, you know, are super popular Gen 1 Pokemon. You know, they don't have crowns on there, pretty unique arts. So, I don't know. I feel like there is a world where this thing gets a little more expensive, especially this one just popped off yet. So it's definitely not coming down in price right now, but 550, 500, 500, 500, 550, all last sold on eBay for PSA 10s. So if it were me, I'd probably hold it a little bit longer and really watch the market. And then of course, once it starts going down, you know, if you need the money and you want that profit, then of course sell it as fast as possible. But I could see the Mew gaining a little bit more value. Pretty much catching up to the 151 Charizard. Because here's the thing. I haven't heard a ton of people say they don't like the Mew. I've heard a ton of people say they don't like the Charizard. All right, next question is from at Ricardino90. Hey, Pokebeard, always enjoy your content. Keep it up. I managed to pick up a case of the 151 Pokemon Center ETB when it first came out, and I've seen it shoot up. Would you sell now or keep in hopes it keeps going? Thanks again. So that's a tough one too, but I really think same thing. I think this thing's going to be so expensive. We might get a reprint if we do in the last 10 minutes, like no joke, but they have restocked some Pokemon Center ETBs before. The Pokemon Center ETB now has higher sales than the UPC, so this is the best product you can even get right now for 151 so I'd probably hold just a little bit longer. I think it can definitely gain some value. If it were me, I'd hold it forever. You know, you never know how expensive this box could be. It could be thousands down the road. You never know. Next is from at hung like horsey should i sell my 151 etb while it's 90 to 100 and invest into another evolving skies etb so i probably wouldn't do that i mean i'm guessing you got the 151 etb for a decent price i'm guessing so let's say if you did it's not that smart i mean you're not really going to get a ton of value anyways after shipping and fees i mean you're really going to make like 20 dollars or something like that and then you're investing in an ETB that's, you know, quadrupled in price already. So if it were me, just hold it. 151 is very, very solid. You know, it's almost more iconic than Evolving Skies just because it is 151, even though Evolving Skies is way better. 151 is a very, very solid set. But yeah, you always got to remember the amount of profit you're going to make after shipping and fees. You know, $20, $30, it's not really worth it. But next question is from at John Carlos Ventura. 3763. Hey, Pokebeard, I just pulled a Gengar VMAX from a Fusion Strike Pack. Do you think I should sell now or hold? Also, great work, new sub, and loving it. Appreciate that. So, Gengar right now is going up. So, I would definitely hold a little bit longer, watch it, you know, like crazy. And once it starts leveling out, then it might be a good time to sell. But when the line's going pretty much straight up like that, definitely hold and then possibly get it graded too. You know, if you can get that 10, that is definitely awesome. But the Gengar could definitely get back up there. Let's do the one-year chart and see how high it got. So it got up to $407. And then last sold is $370, $315, $360. So we got three of them at $380. So 
Yeah, I definitely think you can get over $400 for this card. No problem. Next is from at Jone Tamino 1055. Hey, Pokebeard, I'm really happy for you and your family. You deserve this. Appreciate that. My question is, what do you think about the Blooming Waters collection from 151? How do you think it will affect the market? I have some 151 stock, sealed, and cards. Should I sell now that the prices are high, or should I hold? You know, I'm going to say the same thing, pretty much. I'd probably hold a little bit longer. Again, if you need money, or let's say if you want to make some crazy moves and sell some of the stuff you got right now and invest it into, you know, stuff that's super cheap, or maybe more blooming waters when this comes out for msrp you know that might be a decent idea next is from at slw 066 hey beard do you think the evolutions v max premium collections are still worth buying you see them rising in the future thanks for your videos have a nice day we'll take a little peek so the vaporeon market price 146 jolteon 126 flareon 121 i could definitely see these boxes going up in price I think, in my opinion, these are the best promos we have ever gotten in all of Pokemon history. Let me know down below in the comments. I think it beats the tag teams, and I think it beats the X and Y promos, because we're getting two different promos and then the jumbo of an alternate art. The only thing I don't like about this box is that I wish it had more packs. If this thing had 10 packs, it would be unstoppable. But in my opinion, there's not really a box or a tin that can compete. You know, like I said, even the tag team tins, they just come with one promo. Like, you cannot beat the selection. And then there is Evolving Skies in there, too. So, yeah, I could definitely see these going up in price. Next is from at we go on fishing. Yo, Pokebeard, loving the content and respecting the grind. Everyone is going crazy over 151. Almost insane. What's your educated opinion on the Charizard SIR pricing 10 to even 20 years from now? Beautiful and highly respectable arts. Thank you for reading. So it's super tough to save for cards because they constantly go up and down, up and down. You know, we can get a new Charizard card that blows this out of the water or a new set that makes 151 just look like nothing. You never know. But, you know, I could see this card being a $500 rock card, maybe, you know, maybe 1000 in a PSA 10, maybe even 1500 in a PSA 10. I don't think it will ever beat the Umbreon VMAX or the Latias Tag Team. So recently sold on TCG Player 190, 195, 187. Basically 190 to 200. We got a 173 down there. But it is a very solid card in a very, very solid set. Has great potential. Next is from at DigitalFox86 with the $1.99 tip. I really, really appreciate that. Hey, do you think the Greninja EX premium collection from GameStop worth the buy? Keep up the good work. Love the content. Well, the box right now is already doing great. So if you can find it in the store at $30 or whatever, not a bad price. Last sold on TCG player, 42, 31, 42, 31, 42, 31, 42, 42, 42. But I think it is a very, very solid box. The set really isn't the best, but again, the promo is very solid. And anybody trying to complete, you know, like all the Scarlet and Violet special illustration rares and illustration rares, they're going to need this card. So it is a somewhat important box if you really think about it. And Greninja's very, very popular. Next is from my member at T Pokepoles. Hey man, love the content. I see that Pokemon Center has Silver Tempest booster boxes for right around 140. Do you think it's worth buying a few to add to the sealed collection? Do you think the set has potential to be pretty valuable in the future with that Lugia in there? So I do like Silver Tempest. I do think it's going to be a slow mover though, just because how long it's been in stock on the Pokemon Center website. You know, $143 still in stock. And then to ordering loose booster boxes from the Pokemon Center, you have to worry about them getting damaged. You know, a ton of people do not want damaged booster boxes. So you have to keep that in mind. If you can find it in person at 140-ish, that's not too bad. You know, nice, clean Silver Tempest boxes. I'd grab a few. And I do have a few Silver Tempest boxes, but definitely going to be slow movers for sure. Next is from at KKCC11. What do you think about the three Blister Arcanine promo? Very hard to grade. Had 30 of this card raw. And everyone had scratches. Awesome cosmic foil. So when we're dealing with these promos now, it's just so tough. We have illustration rares. We even have illustration rare promos now for our ETBs. So, you know, I can't really see these being super, super valuable in the future. I'm guessing this is the Arcanine you're talking about for the Scarlet and Violet era. But, you know, it is a pretty solid art. But like I said, you just cannot compete with these illustration rares. So I don't think a ton of people are going to be really all over this card. To where if you invest a ton into it, it's going to be a slow mover, I think. But yeah, we just have a lot better options now. 
Next is from at Casper the Friendly Ghost 777. What if I bought a numbered T-Tar Bear Walker skateboard? Dragonite sold out and the rest aren't numbered. I remember you said numbered items have more of a premium total. It's 330 after taxes and shipping. Thanks. So I was actually looking at that Dragonite skateboard. The only reason I didn't get it, I don't skateboard at all. It's probably the thing I'm worst at. So I don't have any of these. I knew the Dragonite was going to sell out right away, which it did. You know, I'm sure it'll be pretty valuable. But, you know, I don't really collect for just purely profits. You know, I'd rather invest in a few booster boxes myself. Or, you know, same price, I can get a Pokemon Center ETB case. But if you like skateboards, and it is numbered, T-Tar is very solid. This is one you're talking about right here. I think it is a great, great option. Let's see, does it say what it is numbered out of? Limited edition of 250. Now that's pretty good because I've seen these skateboards numbered it out of like 750 and 500. So I do feel like this is a somewhat decent pickup, especially if you do enjoy skateboards yourself. All right, next question is from at BTSU1YF. Hey, Pokebeard, this is a question that might make some people uncomfortable, but I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about, do you think the amount of people who collect Pokemon Seal product has become so high that there's going to be a beanie baby effect? In other words, 10 to 20 years from now, so many people have big sealed collections that the prices won't appreciate as well as people expect. Well, it's not really comparable to Beanie Babies because we can open up these boxes and we can have the cards and there will always be people who will want to open up these boxes. I do think the more people investing, the longer it will take, especially for, you know, the average sets and like your average boxes and stuff like that. But I do think the top tier sets will have no problem at all. You have to think millions of packs get opened every single week from people doing box breaks. You know, we never had that before. Like, I'm talking millions of packs. I mean, just go watch. Some people do five, six, seven, eight hour long live streams. You know, Cool Trainer Ryan opens up cases. But all right, next question is from at PokeFam. Come watch us. Love your content and how collector and viewer friendly you are. Hope the best for you and your family with your channel. What is your best way to find conventions and card party styled events near me? My major towns are about an hour away, Casey and Omaha. So it's difficult to find anything unless it's a major sponsored event on pre-release. Hope to see you guys at Card Party one day. You just literally have to call all your local card stores. That's pretty much all you can do. Like no joke. And then, you know, check Facebook, Reddit, stuff like that. Next is from at Ash Coleman 7334. Hi, really enjoy your videos. New to Pokemon since base set and been wanting to get back into collecting for a while. I was going to get 151, but it's impossible to find packs at the moment. I really like what you said about not going for master sets, and I really like the IRs and SIRs. What's the best way to do this? Would you still open pack and try and get lucky or just buy the cards direct? Well, there is a reprint coming in February. So definitely, you know, get a couple boxes and, you know, have some fun. It's a blast. And then on top of that, hopefully that reprint will bring the prices down on some of the cards and then just start buying some singles on eBay. Go to your local card stores. And then you can buy big lots on eBay too. Next is from at way out of date. Question, can you do a video without saying the word next? Nope. Next is from at Thomas Rose 7924. What happens to this channel if you shave your beard? I don't think I'll ever shave my beard, so you do not have to worry about that, but I would retire if I ever did. Next is from at Angel De Los Santos 7. Hi, Poker Beard. Great videos. This might be a very personal question but I'm looking for different ideas. How do you have your budget set for Pokemon cards slash sealed items? So I probably do 70% sealed, 30% cards. You know, I don't need a ton of cards to finish all my sets. I'm kind of replacing cards right now too, but it's just smarter to invest in sealed. And then, like I said, I already have a ton of cards. So, and then if we're talking like actual budget wise, you know, I better be saving money every month if I'm investing into Pokemon and Pokemon cards. So remember that if you are investing into Pokemon cards like sealed, Try to invest that same amount of money, you know, in your actual bank. So if you're investing 150 into sealed Pokemon a month, you know, make sure you're saving $150 at least every month of actual money. All right, next is from at Gaming Chambers 835. Great video. Thanks for using my question. When looking for raw cards, what do you think of buying from TCG with no picture? You know, if you're going to buy on TCG player, just don't expect PSA 10 quality cards. So if you're not super picky and it's the cheapest option, then go for it. You know, pretty solid for the binder. And you can find a lot of good bulk deals on there too. All right, next question is from at Pokedad Diaries. I started to collect PSA 10 Japanese Pikachu promo cards, but wondered whether to branch out and grab BGS 9.5 slabs too. Would you say that the 9.5 from BGS equals PSA 10 grade? 
Nah, I feel like the PSA 10 still slightly beats it out. If you're going to do it, I'd probably just do CGC 10s, to be honest. You know, you might as well just keep them both 10. You will be so much happier. Next is from Atchan Free. If you were holding a collection box for the future, but it got damaged, would you rather hold and sell it as is or break it down and sell the pieces individually? Well, it depends on what the box is and the packs and the contents inside. But you can easily figure it out if you just look up, you know, the recently sold of each of the packs and the box and just find the cheapest sold. You know, you got to take a little deduction for the damage and then just figure out which one's going to gain more value. Next is from at instinct x instinct. I have grown my collection immensely since you gave me advice on slowly down ripping packs. I recently acquired a shadowless Venusaur base set in a lot that cost me 125 total. Condition is lightly played plus. Someone offered me a sealed 151 Pokemon Center exclusive ETB with a very small tear in the back corner. I took that deal. Was it a good trade? Pretty solid trade, I think. Next is from a member at Aaron BF20. I've been sitting on a sealed booster box of evolutions for a couple of years. It seems to have kind of topped out, at least for now. Do you think it is a better investment to trade that for an Evolving Skies box? What do you think is a better long-term hold? Yes, I would trade that instantly if you can. You know, for sure. Next is from at Curtis Letty 1408. I've bought a lot of cases where they just slap the label on the outside and ship it as is. Would you say that these are less desirable? Maybe it would be a good idea to sell the boxes individually when the time comes. That does suck. And I do think it does make the case a little bit less valuable. But, you know, you can definitely just try to sell it as a case first. And then if it doesn't sell, sell the individual boxes. That's why I don't care as much. You know, if I just have one, you know, sealed Pokemon Center ETV case of a set and I ever go to sell it, I would never just sell the whole case. I would open it and keep a box, you know, an ETB for myself, at least one or two, and then sell the other ETBs. So that's why I don't care too much about it. But yeah, it does suck when you're getting those crappy labels slapped right on the case. Next is from a member at Justin Kleckner. New to Pokemon have a question about putting together complete runs of each set. Do you typically mix slash match regular hollows and reverse hollows, or do you try to put together a complete run of each type? Complete runs of hollows, complete runs of reverse hollows, etc. Thanks and keep up the great videos. Been very helpful for me as a newcomer to the hobby. So, well, I always recommend trying not to do master sets because then you spend a ton of time, you know, worrying about reverse hollows and non hollows and spending money on these cards when. You know, they're not even really cards that you actually love. I strongly suggest just collecting the cards you like. You'll save a ton of money. But if you're talking about doing master sets, you know, if a card has a hollow, reverse hollow, and non-hollow, you got to get all three versions. You know, it just sucks. So, again, you know, you can definitely do master sets. It is pretty fun, especially, you know, looking for those cheaper cards. But I strongly recommend just collecting what you like. You know, look at all the sets, really think about what you like, and then start from there. If you like all the illustration rares, collect all those. All right, next is from at TV Pokemon. Hi, Pokebeard. Thank you for answering my last question. Another one for you. Do you ever sell your extra cards to online buy lists? Sometimes it seems they will take essentially bulk cards, and if you go with the store credit payout option, you can turn bulk or extra cards into cards you want. Any thoughts and tips here? Thank you again for the awesome content. Keep it up. I never have, but you could definitely do it, especially if they're offering decent deals. Because, yeah, it's just simple sometimes to just get rid of all your cards at once especially bulk. It can be a hassle. So, you know, if they're offering good deals, you can definitely do it. All right. Last question is from at instinct X instinct. Hey, it's me again. This is going to sound like a joke, but it isn't. When buying vintage lots, which I recently started doing from your advice, my last questions, if you get a card that's super beat up and you send it in to be graded and it gets a two, would you crack it, bend that MF in half and then send it back for a one? When the price difference between a two and a one is a hundred dollars roughly, some ones value at almost what tens do, and a two grade doesn't do me any good at all. I've never really thought about that, but I feel like you could maybe try that. Let me know if you do. I would love to know. It'd be hilarious if you did it, and then it got like a three. That would be super, super funny. But yeah, it is crazy. PSA ones have a ton of value. I don't really get, you know, the whole PSA one collecting. You know, I mean, you know, they say this card had a story and stuff like that, but usually it's just a kid who put it in his pocket you know, most of the time for these vintage cards. But yeah, if you do do that, please let me know. I would love to know, you know, drop it in a What If Wednesday or something like that so we can all see. But all right, that was today's Pokemon What If Wednesday. If you guys do have any questions, like I said before, please drop them down below for a chance to be in next week's video. And then too, if you guys want to know when 151 comes back in stock or maybe some Pokemon Center ETBs, 
definitely follow me on my Instagram or join my YouTube membership. It's only 99 cents a month. And then if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a like and comment. And then too, if you guys want to watch my last Pokemon Market Monday where the market is just going crazy, click this video here. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.